18th, Blessed Andrew Sanyi, Confessor, First Order. Andrew was born in the 13th century at Anagni in the Roman Campania of the noble counts of Sanyi, a most ancient and illustrious family. Many great princes of the church had already proceeded from this noble family. Among them were the two great popes and protectors of the Franciscan order, Innocent III and Gregory IX. Alexander IV was Andrew's uncle. Boniface VIII was his nephew. The road to high honor had opened its portals to him too, but even as a young man, he recognized the vanity of the world and renounced it entirely. He left his father's castle and sought another home in the newly founded Franciscan convent of St. Lawrence in the Apennine. There he found a solitary grotto where, with the permission of the superiors, he made his abode. The cavern was so narrow and low that, because of his tall stature, Andrew was obliged either to kneel or to bend over considerably when he was inside. In spite of this inconvenience, he spent almost his entire life there in the contemplation of heavenly things, practicing great austerities and struggling almost continually against the evil spirits, over which, with the grace of God, he always emerged the victor. He was diligent also in pursuing the study of the sacred sciences and was the author of a treatise on the veneration of the Blessed Virgin, which was treasured by his contemporaries, but which has, unfortunately, not survived to our day. In the year 1295, his uncle, Pope Alexander IV, visited him with the purpose of presenting him with the cardinal's hat. But neither Alexander nor later Boniface VIII succeeded in inducing the saint to accept the dignity. This humility made such an impression on Boniface VIII that he expressed the wish to outlive Andrew so that he might have the privilege of canonizing him. In the last years of his life, Andrew was favored with the gift of miracles and of prophecy. And on February 1st, 1302, the humble servant of God went forth to receive heavenly honors. His body reposes with the Friars Minor Conventual at St. Lawrence, and he is still signally honored by the people and invoked by them as special protector against the attacks of evil spirits. The uninterrupted veneration accorded Andrew was solemnly approved and confirmed by Pope Innocent XIII, a Shion of the same noble family. On renouncing one's comfort. Consider how blessed Andrew sacrificed all the comforts of life he might have enjoyed in the ancestral home of his distinguished family in order to lead a life of mortification and penance in a poor convent, later repairing to a low and damp cave in which he could not even stand upright. It was their exalted spirit which prompted the saints to renounce the comforts of the body. They understood that the soul soars the higher to its God the more the body is kept in subjection through Christian mortification. They preferred, therefore, to afflict the flesh and cause it discomfort rather than to indulge the natural propensity to ease and comfort. That is what St. Paul teaches us when he says, For if you live according to the flesh, you shall die. But if by the Spirit you mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. Romans 8.13 To what extent have you conformed your conduct to this teaching? Consider how the majority of people are bent on procuring every possible comfort for their bodies. After food and drink, it appears that the main object of all their aim and efforts is their comfort. A fine, comfortable residence, comfortable clothing, a comfortable bed. 
They consider it so sensible and proper to consult only their comfort that they compliment themselves on not lacking anything by way of comfort for the sake of fashion and vanity. They escape one vice only to succumb to another, and that perhaps a worse one. He who serves the weakness of the flesh often forgets his soul completely. The few devotions he may still be practicing lack vigor, and the worst of it is that he encourages and strengthens in his body an enemy of his soul, laying the latter open to some of the worst temptations. If St. Paul believed that he should discipline his body in order not to be eternally lost, will not a person who is concerned only with pampering the flesh surely glide into the eternal abyss? Do you, perhaps, also find yourself on this precipitous path? Consider whence this inclination to effeminacy and love of ease proceeds. On the one hand, it is the result of the general corruption of our nature due to original sin. Hence, the imagination and the thought of man's heart are prone to evil from his youth. Genesis 8.21 On the other hand, it proceeds from the enemy of mankind, the infernal tempter, those whom he cannot destroy with vanity, he seeks to pervert by means of sensual pleasure and effeminacy, that after urging them to yield to every bodily delight, he may torment them forever in hell. How many have already been entrapped in his snares. Should we not prefer, like blessed Andrew, to subject our bodies to occasional inconvenience, rather than expose ourselves to such dangers of body and soul. Prayer of the Church Protect us, good Lord, in body and soul, through the intercession and merits of thy blessed confessor Andrew, against all the attacks of the evil spirits, that they may not succeed by their craftiness in making us share in their wickedness, as they aim to make us share in their damnation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed Andrew Sainy, pray for us.